everyone, it's Lindsay again with Equip Me OT here today to talk about grab bar placement. So this video really comes from a place where I've experienced a lot in my career, which is being called into a home to decide where grab bars need to be to maximize safety and independence for the homeowner. So I wanted to go kind of over how those decisions are made and what grab bars you might want to pick, what tools you're going to need to kind of prepare you for the actual installation. If you would like to see videos about installing grab bars, stick around and maybe hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be posting over the next few weeks a series of videos on how to install grab bars in different types of bathroom setups. So shower, toilet, you name it. So stick around for those. Um, today I really wanna go over the two things that go into making the decisions about grab bar placement in the home setting. So the very first thing and always at the top of your mind when you're deciding where to put grab bars is the end user. Who's going to be using these grab bars? Uh, are they going to be working with a very specific disability or are we trying to use them as a preventative measure? So those kinds of things are really gonna be important as we go forward in making those decisions, always thinking about the person or people who are going to be using the product. Because obviously you don't wanna put something somewhere uh, and then have it be useless for the folks because these are a bit involved when it comes to the installation process. The other thing I wanna go over is the actual decision making and how we kinda decide where to put a grab bar. We're gonna discuss it from the shower's perspective as well as from a toilet perspective. Those are the two most common places we're gonna see grab bars in the bathroom setting. So we're gonna start here at the shower because it's the most common place we see grab bars being installed in the home. They pack a lot of bang for their buck as far as really reducing fall risk um, and giving somebody a lot more independence with getting in and out of their shower safely. So this is great for folks who maybe are building a new home or remodeling an existing home to keep in mind when it comes to grab bars. Uh, the two most important tools you can have on hand when you're deciding where to place your grab bars is a roll of good painter's tape. You want to have a nice roll of this as, or masking tape but basically this is going to help with both the decision-making process as well as the installation process down the line. So a good roll of tape, as well as a good stud finder. You wanna make sure that the stud finder you're using has a deep scan mode on it because if you're going to be searching for studs in an installation shower like this where you have the plastic surround or if you're trying to get through tile, you're gonna need that deep scan. Um, in addition to those things, a little bit of know-how about um, basic construction is going to help as well, but I'm going to give you some tips on that here today. So hopefully you can be empowered to maybe tackle this project on your own. So let's get started about deciding where those grab bars are going to go. We're going to use this shower as our example. It's kind of similar to some that you may see out in the community, but I want to show you some particulars about why I would decide to put grab bars in certain places. So this shower is placed in my bathroom a little bit awkwardly in that I have a countertop very near to the front edge of the shower. This wall here would be typically where you would find an entrance point grab bar, a vertical grab bar. But because I have my countertop so close, I really can't put one here because most people aren't going to slide themselves between the counter and the shower to grab. So we're going to turn ourselves over to the other one here. And I would like to see about this wall. An external grab bar placement is always the first place to look because it's going to be the easiest. The studs are easy to find, they're typically easy to drill into, and always, always drill a grab bar into at least one stud. I highly recommend both ends going into a stud if you can, if you can um, avoid going into an empty wall space, you will be much happier with your final result. So, we're gonna take our masking tape here. If we had our person with us who was going to be using the grab bar, I'd have them right here, actually attempting and showing where they put their hands and marking that with the painter's tape. So we're gonna go ahead and mark a fairly long one. I like to go longer. Um, I, I much prefer a longer grab bar over a shorter grab bar, much more versatile, could be used by uh, an elderly person, perhaps stabilizing some, or a child who's maybe using it to help them get in and out of a tall edged shower. So the longer, the better. Um, so this one I put right here so that I can now Stabilize myself as I step into the shower. Now, typically, you would want to put a second grab bar vertically at the head of the shower, but most people aren't gonna face this direction. So that's where this shower gets a little funky. So I would actually place the next grab bar in the long wall here. 
These are by far the hardest grab bars to install because you're going to try to hit two studs. So if you have your stud finder here, you can use that to try to locate. Um, this shower is an insert, so there's also going to be a gap between your stud and your wall. So that's another consideration when installing. We're going to get over all those details in a future video when I actually go to install the grab bar on this insert shower. But for placement reasons, we're going to kind of pretend like we're grabbing and stabilizing. The long wall here, I like to go with a 32 inch grab bar. The reason being, most studs are going to be 16 inches apart. And for that reason, I want to make sure I have enough space between the two ends of my grab bar to hit two studs. If you go longer or shorter, that's when you typically see people angle a grab bar, and they're just not as useful. A straight horizontal grab bar is by far the easiest and most practical for most people to use, whether they're sitting or standing. So if you've got the height of the person you're working with, take into consideration where their hand would rest. If we're talking somebody who's over six feet, their hand's going to want to rest a little higher, or somebody who's very petite, you are going to have the hand a little bit lower. So anywhere from typically 32 to 36 inches from the floor is ADA compliance. But in this whole scenario, we're not necessarily focusing on the ADA compliant positions. We're focusing on what works for the person. So I'm going to take my tape again. I'm going to mark off. that second placement. And again, these are estimates. These are going to likely change a little bit as you decide where the, the um, drill points are going to be behind this wall, because that's going to really ultimately help in your decision of where the grab bar is. But this is kind of that goal placement based on where I theoretically would place my hand for support. I'm short, so I set it a little bit lower. If you were a little taller, shift it up a little bit. And the nice thing about using the tape, you can move it. You can play around with it a little bit and see what works best. So the last place I would consider putting a grab bar in this shower is vertically underneath or kind of above the plumbing fixtures. This is a really great spot for a grab bar. You can put a grab bar here and have it have a lot of multiple, multiple uses. So I'm going to set one here. And again, I'm going to go longer. I'm going 24 to 32 inches here. Since it's vertical, it's much easier to get it into a stud because you only need to find one. So I already used my stud finder here, my stud finder tool set to deep scan mode and found that it was a stud right there. So that helps with that decision as well. Having a vertical grab bar here between this and this can also give you a spot because most, a lot of grab bars, and I'll post a picture here, that has a actual grab or handheld shower head holder that can mount to the grab bar. So another multi-use tool for your shower that adds safety as well as functionality. So that's a great spot. So there we have it. This shower I am marked up and ready. Now the next step would be to again evaluate where your studs are. Figure out where you're going to have the best possible chance of hitting two studs. So again along this wall. And then in the next video we're going to go into a little more detail on how in fact you would go about installing the grab bar on this type of surround. All right. So now we find ourselves back by the toilet, which is another common place in the bathroom where you're going to find grab bars. Um, this particular toilet is close to a wall, so you may want to be able to put a grab bar here to help with that sit to stand. Some people also put grab bars along the back wall, which is an ADA compliant position for a grab bar to assist with coming to a stand when completing your transfer. This bathroom also has a counter right next to the toilet, which I find is pretty common in a lot of bathrooms. So oftentimes people use that counter as that second stabilizing position to be able to grab and come to a stand. So let's talk about where I'd put grab bars in this particular space. So obviously this wall is your most, uh, you know, most obvious place to put one. I'm really close to this wall. So you'd want to make sure that whoever is going to be using it can actually use it with as close as we are to it. But that's beside the point. Let's find those studs because before you do anything, you got to know, are you going to have studs where you need them in order to put your grab bar? So let's go ahead and scan. Okay, we've got a stud here. And I believe we have another stud. We should have one back here. Yep. So you may have to go with a slightly shorter grab bar that would start back here, or there's another stud really close to this door. 
This may be a situation where you'd have to go with a studless mounted grab bar, which they do have some options out there. There's products called Wingets um, or even Moen and Delta both produce a product that is for a hollow wall that is going to be very, very sturdy. I'll post links down below in the descriptions of a few of those products to take a look at if you're considering putting it in where you don't necessarily have a good stud to locate. So let's go ahead and mark this off for where you'd like it. And again, when you're talking about placing grab bars, always take into consideration the user. So once you've put your marking in place, your piece of tape in place, bring the user in, have them try to put their hand there and see if that feels like a comfortable spot. They may want it a little bit lower or a little bit higher even to help with that push to a standing position. They could also use this one obviously to pivot onto the toilet for their transfer. The other one I talked about is along this back wall. Again, you're gonna wanna scan for your, your studs. This one actually has two studs in a great spot. So this would be a good one to run along the back wall. Just like that. And again, this grab bar would be more used for your transfer onto the toilet, not necessarily getting off of it. So there you have it, a couple of grab bar placements for the toilet and three for your shower to get you started with preparing to put grab bars into your bathroom. Please consider subscribing if you wanna check out my next videos, which are going to go through the details of the installation of grab bars in your bathroom, both in a tub surround that we just showed you, as well as in a tile surround and next to your toilet. So consider giving that subscribe button a, a hit for that. And then as always, give me a thumbs up if you found some value in this video. And I appreciate you guys all for following along with me. Thanks.